back doors closed. Okay. Jay Groove, Power Left Red Director. Nathan Davis. John and Julie. Luke Trinity. John Edgar Hoover, or J.E. as his family called him, was born on January 1st, 1895 in Seward Square. His father was Dickerson Naylor Hoover, and his mother was Anne Marie Slatton Hoover. He was an exemplary student throughout middle school, and he was always striving to be his best. As soon as he arrived at Central High School, he set his goal to overcome his stutter. Attention! Um, excuse me, sir. C could I please join th th this, um, um... Cadet Corps? Yes. Would it be p possible for me to join? Of course. We need new recruits anyway. But work on that stutter. Yeah, yes, sir. And Hoover did try. He took speaking classes and joined the debate team. Hoover worked very hard, and the cadet leader noticed. He soon moved up in cadet corps ranks, and he even got to march in an inaugural parade for Woodrow Wilson. But Hoover didn't only excel at discipline. Please, Professor, as to understand, Edgar, you're getting A's in all of your classes. Why do you think you need to tutoring? I want to be the best. And Hoover carried that attitude throughout high school. He soon left the cadet corps and continued to receive straight A's. He left school as a well-respected student with high hopes from everyone. When he left school, he had to choose between taking his straight A's to college or staying at home to support his widowed mother. He decided to compromise. He took a day job at the Library of Congress where he learned to index thousands of cards, a skill that helped him in his later career, and law classes at night at the George Washington University Law School. Hoover became increasingly interested in the Justice Department. Excuse me, sir. <coughs> Do I apply for a job? Tell me where's married here. Well, seeing as I'm in charge here, and I have some time on my hands, I'll look at it right now. <laughs> Recommendations from everywhere. Master in law. Head of your high school cadet corps. Wow, that's an impressive resume. I'm prepared to hire you on the spot. Great. When do I start? You'll start right now, as a clerk. Hoover was an excellent worker. He worked seven days a week, from dawn till dusk. Wow, Edgar, you've been here every day since I heard you. I'd like you to come over here. Now, I usually don't appoint people just on merit, but you've exceeded my wildest dreams. I'm prepared to double your salary and promote you to assistant of the Attorney General. Great. What should I do? Just what you've been doing. You've been excellent. <laughs> Hoover, Edgar, my assistant. Well, Edgar looks like you're beginning another promotion. But Attorney General Palmer, it's only been a few days since the last promotion. Yes, well, with the war and all, everyone's been joining the army or the marines and whatnot. So what shall I be doing? Well, I've heard great things from your supervisors, and I know you have an excellent work ethic. So I'm promoting you to the head of the GID. The head of the... What's the GID? I've recently created a division to search out and deport left-wing radicals, or anyone linked to the Communist Party, mainly because someone tried to kill me and almost succeeded. The GID stands for the General Intelligence Division. Come on, I'll tell you that. All these radicals across the nation, it's disgraceful. We need to deport all of them, now. But Mr. Hoover, we don't have any reason to deport them. I agree. We need a reason to arrest them. We can't just throw them in jail. Let me let you in on a little secret. I have secret files in every radical that's been here since you were born. In fact, I have information on everyone in the entire United States government. <laughs> From the president to the lowliest advisors. So if you don't like what we're doing here, then I guess you can go have a little chat with Attorney General Palmer, who is funding this division and signing your paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> And Hoover succeeded in his quest. He soon led the largest roundup of enemy aliens ever. He arrested over 300,000 people from all across the country. Unfortunately for Hoover, the evidence needed for deportation was sometimes fake or insufficient. And because of this, only two-thirds of the people arrested were deported. Still, Hoover gained a huge amount of trust from Attorney General Palmer and was highly remarked by him. And as the war ended, there was less need for the GID. So Hoover joined the BOI, the Bureau of Investigation. And then on May 10, 1924, Attorney General Harlan Fisk Stone appointed 29-year-old Hoover as acting director of the Bureau of Investigation. By the end of the year, he was director. But this new power turned to his good roots bad. While he still was amazing, he began to abuse his power by using agents and illegal wiretaps to stay in power. He blackmailed his superiors, including eight presidents. But this didn't happen for several years. Hoover's first years as director supported his positive legacy. So 
So why should I keep you on the force? Well, uh, you know, Jimmy from Human Resources, we bud, so we got an understanding if you're picking up when I put it down. <laughs> Send down while you're out there. Yeah. Did you just fire him? Yeah. We need it we need we need names that are qualified names because of connections. I know what you mean. So many people here are completely incompetent. Suddenly Hoover got an idea that would change law enforcement forever. That's it. We need a training academy. I trust you to find the most efficient employees and recruit people right out of college. They'll require background checks, interviews, and even physical testing for agents. I love the idea, but that's gonna be really expensive. You let me take care of that. Hoover quickly cleaned up the corrupt BOI. He fired many agents who were only appointed because of connections, and hired many new agents who are now only appointed because of their qualifications. He also spent time convincing congressmen to increase the Bureau's appropriations, or the money it could spend. He proceeded to order background checks, interviews, and physical testing for his agents, and it showed in the Bureau's increased productivity. But Hoover wasn't always so happy with his agency. Blackmailing is enough. Even with 450,000 cars indexed, how are we supposed to help the good when we can't carry guns? We've knocked out against criminals. Most of look, we don't do stuff like going out and. We need power. Be able to get things under control. That's by making people understand that we have weapons and we are here for a reason. Well, Congress. That's it, Congress, yes. We'll issue a complaint or several complaints. You go out and get hell and we need to talk. And you, let's talk about this idea. Hoover complained to Congress indeed, and soon, in July 1935, the FBI was born. Agents could now carry firearms and act down against criminals. Hoover soon introduced finger profiles and crime labs to the FBI. And what did Hoover tell that Helen Gandy, his secretary? Probably the most important action of his life. He explained to her that in case of his sudden death, she must go into a safe and destroy the secret files. Files that held evidence of major deaths, presidents, and thousands of secrets, including his own. But some of Hoover's information was false, and it led him to believe that there were some serious problems with the civil rights movement. 